Today's Supreme Court ruling overturning Roe v. Wade was felt on the state level almost immediately, with Missouri becoming the first state to make abortion illegal, with exception only for medical reasons. Political analyst Brian Calfano joins us here at 5 o'clock to discuss the political ramifications of today's decision. And Brian, this is one of, if not the most emotionally charged hot button issues in our country. How does today's ruling change the midterm dynamic in November? Do we see record turnout from the left and maybe even across the board with conservatives also motivated by today's decision? That's a great question, Steve. If I had the answer to that, I'd make a lot of money. I think in the end, what we're looking at for the fall is going to be a mix of people who, as you said, are galvanized to get out and vote because of the abortion decision. But look, President Biden and the Democrats have a lot to deal with in terms of explaining the inflation issue. Gas prices are really taking a bite out of everyone's pockets. And so I think in the end, the Democrats don't get the kind of bump that they might be hoping for. The other thing about this is we've never had a national election that's essentially been a referendum about abortion. And this is going to be new territory for both parties, because it could be that the Republicans end up on the short end of the stick now that a lot of their supporters may seem like, oh, I guess we're fine now. We've got what we wanted out of the Supreme Court. Why do we keep showing up at the polling booth to support this party as enthusiastically as we may have done before? So, Brian, some are asking after today's decision, what's next? Anticipating that uh, the majority conservative court could next turn to laws on the books protecting contraception and maybe same-sex marriage. Do you anticipate that? Not in the near term, and part of that is going to be because the court, I think, senses that the reasoning they've laid down in today's decision has to do with taking rights away from people through the process of giving rights in the sense of abortion, if you believe this particular view of it, takes away the right of the unborn child. But with these other issues like contraception and with gay marriage, there's not that same kind of, by allowing gay marriage, you're not allowing a heterosexual marriage. So that legal connection doesn't exist for these other issues, even though you may have folks like Justice Thomas and others on the court who would want to do a type of overturning of those existing precedents. But the court also, I think, is worried as an institution. In the end, can they one decade give a right that exists in the Constitution and the next decade take it away? At what point does this become essentially a, a political process rather than a legal one? And that's going to be on the minds of a lot of folks going forward. Well, this was a day 50 years in the making. Brian Calfano, thank you. Always good to see you, even if it's by Zoom. But uh, thanks for taking the time to join us here at 5 o'clock. You bet. Thanks, Steve. All right.